I mentioned last night the amazing collapse of Russian forces in eastern Ukraine. A Ukrainian counter-offensive, a kind of blitzkrieg really, if I can use that term, uh, has sent Russian forces fleeing in such a blind panic that they've driven their tanks and their trucks into rivers and even into a tree. So many Russian soldiers have surrendered or been killed. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers, meanwhile, paused long enough to thank Australia for the Australian-made Bushmaster vehicles that the Morrison government gave them. The Bushmaster armored personnel carrier is used by the airborne forces of Ukraine to reach forward operating areas. We're grateful to the people and government of Australia for providing these to us. They were a great asset to us in liberating the areas around Kharkiv. Together, we're working towards a victory. Slava Ukraini! Slava! This push by the Ukrainian army has so far recaptured at least 6,000 square kilometres now in the past week and a half and still going. And on Russian state television, commentators for once stop parroting Vladimir Putin's lines and are admitting that his war is a disaster. Joining me from Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, is Ines Sovson, who's deputy head of the pro-European political party, Holos. Ines Sovson, thank you so much indeed for your time again. This breakthrough, how has the news affected Ukrainians, affected their morale? Uh, sorry, as you can see me smiling, probably for the first time since uh, we've been speaking with you. And that I think reflects the general mood over here. Everybody is extremely uplifted. Everybody feeling that this is what is the right thing. This is what we have been waiting for. And we are very happy to actually see that happening. So uh, yeah, we do understand that there are many challenges ahead. We do understand that keeping the territory is, is even more difficult that, uh, you know, liberating it. We are also, uh, well, of course, terrified with uh, what we are hearing from, from the people who have been living under occupation. And we have already got some evidence of people being tortured to death on the occupied territories. So, so that, of course, is depressing. But, but overall, I think that the trend is, of course, very positive, and we're trying to be cautiously optimistic. Well, you're sounding and looking happier than I uh, remember for the last couple of times I've spoken to you. What do you expect to happen next? Well, uh, of course, it's very difficult to predict because you you remember that for the whole summer, everybody were talking about the counteroffensive on the south, and it appears that that has been a trick to to make Russians actually move their troops to the south so that we can actually uh, take over the territory in Kharkiv region in the northeast of Ukraine. So it's very difficult to predict, and I think it's good because when it's difficult to predict for us politicians, then it's also difficult for the Russian army to predict what is to happen. But uh, definitely, several things. Come to mind. Uh, one is is uh, in the territories that have been liberated, liberated, people need humanitarian aid, they need medicines, they need help, uh, medical help, they need psychological help. We need to send teams of investigators to investigate the crimes that have been committed over there. But what is most important, we need to proceed with this counterattack. There seem to be more fightings in Donetsk region right now. We are waiting for, for specific news from there. We are waiting for the news from the south. So Ukrainian army is progressing. And in order to progress faster, we need more weapons from our Western allies. And we're grateful for the Bushmasters that Australia send us, do send us more. You can see now that we're actually putting them to good use and that they that we can actually win this war with the Ukrainian spirit and the weapons that you are supplying to us. In a soft and I'll, uh, I'll take up that, uh, that request from you and uh, I'll talk to the uh, Ukrainian ambassador here and see if we can mount a campaign for more. How do you think Vladimir Putin will respond? Because Obviously, his standing in Russia, with even people on state TV now criticising him, there was, in fact, also a petition signed by 19 members of local councils in, in uh, St. Petersburg and Moscow uh, attacking him. Um, how do you think it's going to respond? Because this is very humiliating to him and it threatens uh, his standing in Russia. He's already fired some missiles at Ukrainian cities. 
just a random punishment. I really tried to knock out your electricity station, so you sit in blackouts. But what do you think he could possibly do? I mean, I have to ask, a nuclear strike? Well, indeed, the, the Russians do feel humiliated with this. I've been following the discussions on the Russian social media a little bit, um, as much as I can bear, truth be told. Um, and they have all been saying what has happened. Putin is a great leader, so that must be the mistake on the side of the commanders on the field. We have to fire them, we have to kill them, and, and all of that. So, so, so they have gone really crazy about about this uh, uh, this Ukraine's counteroffensive. And and uh, then I was following the news uh, of the Ukrainian strikes, uh, oh, uh, sorry, the Russian strikes on the energy plants over here in Ukraine, which left several cities uh, without electricity for a couple of hours. And Russians were feeling vigilant. And, you know, they, they were feeling that this is the right thing to do. And, and I think that is just despicable, truth be told, because they, they, the Russian army cannot fight against Ukrainian army. So instead, they decide to fight against the civilian population. And actually, right now, as we speak, my native city of Kharkiv doesn't have electricity because they they, they, they hit uh, um, another uh, lines uh, over there in, in Kharkiv region. Uh, so I think that this is what will be happening. We are not seeing any signs of potential nuclear attack. That would have to go through so many chains of command that I think that they are not functioning right now. So uh, we just have to hope for the best and uh, continue fighting. Inna Sosa, let me again wish you luck. Thank you so much indeed for your time.